part three chapter six a busy night section two a he first went home and carefully without haste packed his trunk at six o'clock in the morning there was a special train from the town this early morning express only ran once a week and was only a recent experiment though pyotr stepanovitch had told the members of the quintet that he was only going to be away for a short time in the neighbourhood his intentions as appeared later were in reality very different having finished packing he settled accounts with his landlady to whom he had previously given notice of his departure and drove in a cab to erkel's lodgings near the station and then just upon one o'clock at night he walked to kirillov's approaching as before by fedka's secret way pyotr stepanovitch was in a painful state of mind apart from other extremely grave reasons for dissatisfaction he was still unable to learn anything of stavrogin he had it seems for i cannot assert it for a fact received in the course of that day probably from petersburg secret information of a danger awaiting him in the immediate future there are of course many legends in the town relating to this period but if any facts were known it was only to those immediately concerned i can only surmise as my own conjecture that pyotr stepanovitch may well have had affairs going on in other neighbourhoods as well as in our town so that he really may have received such a warning i am convinced indeed in spite of liputin's cynical and despairing doubts that he really had two or three other quintets for instance in petersburg and moscow and if not quintets at least colleagues and correspondents and possibly was in very curious relations with them not more than three days after his departure an order for his immediate arrest arrived from petersburg whether in connection with what had happened among us or elsewhere i don't know this order only served to increase the overwhelming almost panic terror which suddenly came upon our local authorities and the society of the town till then so persistently frivolous in its attitude on the discovery of the mysterious and portentous murder of the student shatov the climax of the long series of senseless actions in our midst as well as the extremely mysterious circumstances that accompanied that murder but the order came too late pyotr stepanovitch was already in petersburg living under another name and learning what was going on he made haste to make his escape abroad but i am anticipating in a shocking way he went into kirillov looking ill-humoured and quarrelsome apart from the real task before him he felt as it were tempted to satisfy some personal grudge to avenge himself on kirillov for something kirillov seemed pleased to see him he had evidently been expecting him a long time with painful impatience his face was paler than usual there was a fixed and heavy look in his black eyes i thought you weren't coming he brought out drearily from his corner of the sofa from which he had not however moved to greet him pyotr stepanovitch stood before him and before uttering a word looked intently at his face everything is in order then and we are not drawing back from our resolution bravo he smiled an offensively patronizing smile but after all he added with unpleasant jocosity if i am behind my time it's not for you to complain i made you a present of three hours i don't want extra hours as a present from you and you can't make me a present you fool what pyotr stepanovitch was startled but instantly controlled himself what huffiness so we are in a savage temper he rapped out still with the same offensive superciliousness at such a moment composure is what you need the best thing you can do is to consider yourself a columbus and me a mouse and not to take offence at anything i say i gave you that advice yesterday i don't want to look upon you as a mouse what's that a compliment but the tea is cold and that shows that everything is topsy-turvy bah but i see something in the window on a plate he went to the window Uh oh boiled chicken and rice but why haven't you begun upon it yet so we are in such a state of mind that even chicken i've dined and it's not your business hold your tongue oh of course besides it's no consequence though for me at the moment it is of consequence only fancy i scarcely had any dinner and so if as i suppose that chicken is not wanted now eh eat it if you can thank you and then i'll have tea 
he instantly settled himself at the other end of the sofa and fell upon the chicken with extraordinary greediness at the same time he kept a constant watch on his victim kirillov looked at him fixedly with angry aversion as though unable to tear himself away i say though pyotr stepanovitch fired off suddenly while he still went on eating what about our business we are not crying off are we how about that document i've decided in the night that it's nothing to me i'll write it about the manifestos yes about the manifestos too but i'll dictate it of course that's nothing to you can you possibly mind what's in the letter at such a moment that's not your business it's not mine of course it need only be a few lines though that you and shatov distributed the manifestos and with the help of fedka who hid in your lodgings this last point about fedka and your lodgings is very important the most important of all indeed you see i am talking to you quite openly shatov why shatov i won't mention shatov for anything what next what is it to you you can't hurt him now his wife has come back to him she has waked up and has sent to ask me where he is she has sent to ask you where he is hm that's unfortunate she may send again no one ought to know i am here pyotr stepanovitch was uneasy she won't know she's gone to sleep again there's a midwife with her arina virginsky so that's how it was she won't overhear i suppose i say you'd better shut the front door she won't overhear anything and if shatov comes i'll hide you in another room shatov won't come and you must write that you quarrelled with him because he turned traitor and informed the police this evening and caused his death he is dead cried kirillov jumping up from the sofa he died at seven o'clock this evening or rather at seven o'clock yesterday evening and now it's one o'clock you have killed him and i foresaw it yesterday no doubt you did with this revolver here he drew out his revolver as though to show it but did not put it back again and still held it in his right hand as though in readiness you are a strange man though kirillov you knew yourself that the stupid fellow was bound to end like this what was there to foresee in that i made that as plain as possible over and over again shatov was meaning to betray us i was watching him and it could not be left like that and you too had instructions to watch him you told me so yourself three weeks ago hold your tongue you've done this because he spat in your face in geneva for that and for other things too for many other things not from spite however why do you jump up why look like that oh oh so that's it is it he jumped up and held out his revolver before him kirillov had suddenly snatched up from the window his revolver which had been loaded and put ready since the morning Pyotr Stepanovitch took up his position and aimed his weapon at Kirillov. The latter laughed angrily. Confess, you scoundrel, that you brought your revolver because I might shoot you. But I shan't shoot you, though... though... And again he turned its revolver upon Pyotr Stepanovitch, as it were rehearsing, as though unable to deny him the pleasure of imagining how he would shoot him. Pyotr Stepanovitch, holding his ground, waited for him waited for him till the last minute without pulling the trigger at the risk of being the first to get a bullet in his head it might well be expected of the maniac but at last the maniac dropped his hand gasping and trembling and unable to speak you played your little game and that's enough pyotr stepanovitch too dropped his weapon i knew it was only a game only you ran a risk let me tell you i might have fired and he sat down on the sofa with a fair show of composure and poured himself out some tea though his hand trembled a little kirillov laid his revolver on the table and began walking up and down i won't write that i killed shatov and i won't write anything now you won't have a document i shan't no you won't what meanness and what stupidity pyotr stepanovitch turned green with resentment i foresaw it though you've not taken me by surprise let me tell you as you please however if i could make you do it by force i would you are a scoundrel though pyotr stepanovitch was more and more carried away and unable to restrain himself you asked us for money out there and promised us no end of things i won't go away with nothing however i'll see you put the bullet through your brains first anyway i want you to go away at once kirillov stood firmly before him no that's impossible pyotr stepanovitch took up his revolver again 
now in your spite and cowardice you may think fit to put it off and to turn traitor to-morrow so as to get money again they'll pay you for that of course damn it all fellows like you are capable of anything only don't trouble yourself i've provided for all contingencies i am not going till i've dashed your brains out with this revolver as i did to that scoundrel shatov if you are afraid to do it yourself and put off your intention damn you you are set on seeing my blood too i am not acting from spite let me tell you it's nothing to me i am doing it to be at ease about the cause one can't rely on men you see that for yourself i don't understand what fancy possesses you to put yourself to death it wasn't my idea you thought of it yourself before i appeared and talked of your intention to the committee abroad before you said anything to me and you know no one has forced it out of you no one of them knew you but you came to confide in them yourself from sentimentalism and what's to be done if a plan of action here which can't be altered now was founded upon that with your consent and upon your suggestion your suggestion mind that you have put yourself in a position in which you know too much if you are an ass and go off to-morrow to inform the police that would be rather a disadvantage to us what do you think about it yes you've bound yourself you've given your word you've taken money that you can't deny Pyotr Stepanovitch was much excited, but for some time past Kirillov had not been listening. He paced up and down the room, lost in thought again. I am sorry for Shatov, he said, stopping before Pyotr Stepanovitch again. Why so? I am sorry if that's all, and do you suppose? Hold your tongue, you scoundrel, roared Kirillov, making an alarming and unmistakable movement. I'll kill you. There, 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 I told a lie, I admit it. I am not sorry at all. Come, that's enough, that's enough. Pyotr Stepanovitch started up apprehensively, putting out his hand. Kirillov subsided and began walking up and down again. I won't put it off. I want to kill myself now. All are scoundrels. Well, that's an idea. Of course, all are scoundrels, and since life is a beastly thing for a decent man. Fool, I am just such a scoundrel as you, as all, not a decent man. There's never been a decent man anywhere. He's guessed the truth at last. Can you, Kirillov, with your sense, have failed to see till now that all men are alike? That there are none better or worse, only some are stupider than others? And that if all are scoundrels, which is nonsense, though, there oughtn't to be any people that are not? Ah! why you are really in earnest kirillov looked at him with some wonder you speak with heat and simply can it be that even fellows like you have convictions kirillov i've never been able to understand why you mean to kill yourself i only know it's from conviction strong conviction but if you feel a yearning to express yourself so to say i am at your service only you must think of the time what time is it oh oh just two Pyotr Stepanovitch looked at his watch and lighted a cigarette. It seems we can come to terms after all, he reflected. I've nothing to say to you, muttered Kirillov. I remember that something about God comes into it. You explained it to me once, twice, in fact. If you stopped yourself, you become God. That's it, isn't it? Yes, I become God. Pyotr Stepanovitch did not even smile. He waited. Kirillov looked at him subtly you are a political impostor and intriguer you want to lead me on into philosophy and enthusiasm and to bring about a reconciliation so as to disperse my anger and then when i am reconciled with you beg for me a note to say i killed shatov pyotr stepanovitch answered with almost natural frankness well supposing i am such a scoundrel but at the last moments does that matter to you kirillov what are we quarrelling about tell me please you are one sort of man and i am another what of it and what's more we are both of us scoundrels yes scoundrels if you like but you know that that's only words all my life i wanted it not to be only words i lived because i did not want it to be even now every day i want it to be not words well every one seeks to be where he is best off the fish that is every one seeks his own comfort that's all that's been a commonplace for ages and ages comfort do you say oh it's not worth while quarrelling over words no you were right in what you said let it be comfort god is necessary and so must exist well that's all right then 
but I know he doesn't and can't. That's more likely. Surely you must understand that a man with two such ideas can't go on living. Must shoot himself, you mean? Surely you must understand that one might shoot oneself for that alone. You don't understand that there may be a man, one man out of your thousands of millions, one man who won't bear it and does not want to. All I understand is that you seem to be hesitating. That's very bad. Stavrogin, too, is consumed by an idea, Kirillov said gloomily, pacing up and down the room. He had not noticed the previous remark. What? Pyotr Stepanovitch pricked up his ears. What idea? Did he tell you something himself? No, I guessed it myself. If Stavrogin has faith, he does not believe that he has faith. If he hasn't faith, he does not believe that he hasn't. Well, Stavrogin has got something else worse than that in his head, Pyotr Stepanovitch muttered peevishly, uneasily watching the turn the conversation had taken in the pallor of Kirillov. Damn it all! He won't shoot himself, he was thinking. I always suspected it. It's a maggot in the brain and nothing more. What a rotten lot of people! You are the last to be with me. I shouldn't like to part on bad terms with you, Kirillov vouchsafed suddenly. Pyotr Stepanovitch did not answer at once. Damn it all, what is it now, he thought again. I assure you, Kirillov, I have nothing against you personally as a man, and always... You are a scoundrel and a false intellect, but I am just the same as you are, and I will shoot myself while you will remain living. You mean to say I am so abject that I want to go on living. He could not make up his mind whether it was judicious to keep up such a conversation at such a moment or not and resolved to be guided by circumstances. But the tone of superiority and of contempt for him, which Kirillov had never disguised, had always irritated him. And now for some reason it irritated him more than ever, possibly because Kirillov, who was to die within an hour or so, Pyotr Stepanovitch still reckoned upon this, seemed to him, as it were, already only half a man, some creature whom he could not allow to be haughty. You seem to be boasting to me of your shooting yourself. I've always been surprised at everyone's going on living, said Kirillov, not hearing his remark. Hm. Admitting that's an idea, but... You ape, you assent to get the better of me. Hold your tongue, you won't understand anything. If there is no God, then I am God. There, I could never understand that point of yours. Why are you God? If God exists, all is his will, and from his will I cannot escape. If not, it's all my will, and I am bound to show self-will. Self-will? But why are you bound? Because all will has become mine. Can it be that no one in the whole planet, after making an end of God and believing in his own will, will dare to express his self-will on the most vital point? It's like a beggar inheriting a fortune, and being afraid of it, and not daring to approach the bag of gold, thinking himself too weak to own it. I want to manifest my self-will. I may be the only one, but I'll do it. Do it, by all means. I am bound to shoot myself, because the highest point of my self-will is to kill myself with my own hands. But you won't be the only one to kill yourself. There are lots of suicides. With good cause. But to do it without any cause at all, simply for self-will, I am the only one. He won't shoot himself, flashed across Pyotr Stepanovitch's mind again. Do you know, he observed irritably, if I were in your place I should kill someone else to show my self-will, not myself. You might be of use. I'll tell you whom, if you are not afraid. Then you needn't shoot yourself today, perhaps. We may come to terms. To kill someone would be the lowest point of self-will, and you show your whole soul in that. I am not you. I want the highest point, and I'll kill myself. He's come to it of himself, Pyotr Stepanovitch muttered malignantly. I am bound to show my unbelief, said Kirillov, walking about the room. I have no higher idea than disbelief in God. I have all the history of mankind on my side. Man has done nothing but invent God so as to go on living and not kill himself. That's the whole of universal history up till now. I am the first one in the whole history of mankind who would not invent God. Let them know it once for all. He won't shoot himself, Pyotr Stepanovitch thought anxiously. Let whom know it, he said, egging him on. It's only you and me here. You mean Liputin? Let everyone know. All will know. There is nothing secret that will not be made known. 
he said so and he pointed with feverish enthusiasm to the image of the saviour before which a lamp was burning pyotr stepanovitch lost his temper completely so you still believe in him and you've lighted the lamp to be on the safe side i suppose the other did not speak do you know to my thinking you believe perhaps more thoroughly than any priest believe in whom in him listen kirillov stood still gazing before him with fixed and ecstatic look listen to a great idea there was a day on earth and in the midst of the earth there stood three crosses one on the cross had such faith that he said to another to-day thou shalt be with me in paradise the day ended both died and passed away and found neither paradise nor resurrection his words did not come true listen that man was the loftiest of all on earth he was that which gave meaning to life the whole planet with everything on it is mere madness without that man there has never been any like him before or since never up to a miracle for that is the miracle that there never was or never will be another like him and if that is so if the laws of nature did not spare even him have not spared even their miracle and made even him live in a lie and die for a lie then all the planet is a lie and rests on a lie and on mockery so then the very laws of the planet are a lie and the vaudeville of devils what is there to live for answer if you are a man that's a different matter it seems to me you've mixed up two very different causes and that's a very unsafe thing to do but excuse me if you are god if the lie were ended and if you realize that all the falsity comes from the belief in that former god so at last you understand cried kirillov rapturously so it can be understood if even a fellow like you understands you understand now that the salvation for all consists in proving this idea to everyone who will prove it i can't understand how an atheist could know that there is no god and not kill himself on the spot to recognize that there is no god and not to recognize at the same instant that one is god oneself is an absurdity else one would certainly kill oneself if you recognize it you are sovereign and then you won't kill yourself but will live in the greatest glory but one the first must kill himself for else who will begin and prove it so i must certainly kill myself to begin and prove it now i am only a god against my will and i am unhappy because i am bound to assert my will all are unhappy because all are afraid to express their will man has hitherto been so unhappy and so poor because he has been afraid to assert his will in the highest point and has shown his self-will only in little things like a schoolboy i am awfully unhappy for i am awfully afraid terror is the curse of man but i will assert my will i am bound to believe that i don't believe i will begin and will make an end of it and open the door and will save that's the only thing that will save mankind and will recreate the next generation physically for with his present physical nature man can't get on without his former god i believe for three years i've been seeking for the attribute of my godhead and i've found it the attribute of my godhead is self-will that's all i can do to prove in the highest point my independence and my new terrible freedom for it is very terrible i am killing myself to prove my independence and my new terrible freedom his face was unnaturally pale and there was a terribly heavy look in his eyes he was like a man in delirium pyotr stepanovitch thought he would drop onto the floor end of part three chapter six section two a